Don in London, hello. It's September the 5th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour. Quite irrational towards the end of my drinking. Uh, became a 24-7 drinker, lost everything. Ended up in the gutter, judging the world as the world was judging me in the gutter. Now, how did that happen? Well, I don't know. If we have a malady which we don't know we have, and it goes out of control, and we go out of control, or maybe we just didn't understand or learn that uh, somewhere in the middle of life is balance. You know, out of the extremes for any length of time when we're coping in some way. And I guess I coped for a long, long time with extremes of feeling, uh, fear in particular, putting on a brave face as I was taught, and never really dealing with those feelings, pushing them down with alcohol to take the edge off, to find conviviality and joviality and joy and then drinking on sadness, which is one of the worst things to do. We don't, we don't process our emotions too well with the drink inside us, or many drinks, as often happens. And for me, I've learned that one day at a time I can be sober, and sober means, if I can find all my books and stuff, that uh, I have a chance. I have a chance at a day working. And this, this week has been a bit of a torment in some ways. Oh, here it is. I thought I lost my preamble. I'll explain what that is in a minute if you don't know already. So my day's been quite full. Uh, I need to keep sober up, uppermost in my mind in a, in a simple way, which is to be a part of a fellowship where I can go express what is going on in me. And that's about my emotional well-being, my physical well-being, and something called spiritual, which I've learned is really being able to deal with reality as it is right now just for today and what a gift so rather than storing up feelings of uh, worry concern or happiness or not having anybody to talk to being in fellowship has given me an opportunity to find out how other people stay sober uh, using a 12-step program and how I may be sober utilizing a 12-step program and although it's called a program actually it's about living a new way with different attitudes and behavior Sim simply that and everybody, everybody I know in fellowship does it their way, unique and authentic, maybe with some guidance and some wisdom learned. But, uh, you know, we are all unique and authentic humans, here for a good reason, to be free to choose what we can and cannot do, and learn what the difference is, and then find some acceptance around that. So it's not being or doing things for others necessarily, although that is part of life. It's knowing who we are first, and what we need to do, in order that we can do the other bits, which is to be a part of, to be included, to love other people, be loved back and have something useful to do. And all these concepts were alien in my last days of drinking because I just didn't want to wake up. And uh, I had an example of that happening with a neighbour of mine. And uh, that was a very, very sad occasion. And trying to help and realising that this person had departed and gone for good meant that those who were left had a lot of grief and will be grieving quite hard in their own way and understanding what this loss means to them. But you know what, when somebody who is amiable and unable to get sober uh, departs and dies and they got the wrong amount of ingredients, if you like, on that one occasion, but we get worn down and I know that I, tr I treated my illness with as much contempt as I treated myself. In fact, we're one in the same, of course. So I know I have the malady still, and it won't go away. So if I were to take a drink, I don't know where it would lead. So I prefer not to, and make that choice on a daily basis. So what helps me is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, for my sobriety, so that the rest of my life can work on a daily basis. So I've been to two meetings today, and the the meetings, that, at the beginning of meetings, we share a statement of intent as a fellowship and as individuals, what it's all about. And this is how it goes. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. 
AA is not allied with any, any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's why people go there. And uh, meetings, well, <coughs> two meetings today and in between that, being in touch with family, being invited out to lunch by them tomorrow lunchtime, so I shall go have uh, Sunday lunch with my sister and my mother, who helped me find recovery just by being kind and loving, and sometimes tough love. Uh, in other words, I had to stay away from them because I was destroying them as much as I was destroying myself, and learning that I needed to find a way to stand on my own two feet. Not alone, uh, but with support and being challenged in my behaviour on a daily basis. So if I don't challenge my behaviour and know where I am, I go to meetings where others can hear me and I just share. So fellowship and friendship have merged for me. So it's no longer a chore and uh, AA is not full of depressed, horribly um, fearful people asking God at every, t at every turn to make their life better. What they do is they find either good conscience to live well and be happy as life can afford or sad as this week has been in many respects and also to be able to en engage in life and for me today it's been absolutely fantastic to see friends then go into the centre of town and go to Trafalgar Square where I, I found uh, a great big event on which was sh sharing about disability and the gifts that people have they may have one thing which we can recognize immediately as uh, something they cannot do, but in essence, when that happens, if a blind person cannot see, their hearing improves, or their thinking improves, and their ability to speak and communicate verbally. So if a deaf person cannot hear, they find other ways to communicate, or have other interests. So the gifts come in different ways. So if one thing doesn't work, another thing starts to work and develop. And that is the gift of sobriety for me as well. I'm just checking the time. I norm I've been wondering how to do these videos. So this one's really about AA, AA makes my life work, or AA life works for me. And the reason why I say that is that this video is really about saying my day has worked for me. And that even though I went to two meetings and one tonight where I was able to share, you know, two things which are really important to me. That is. Uh, I've learned how to love people and also know I can hate their behaviour and realise that I hated my own behaviour when I was drinking as much as anybody else did and there was a lot of shame and guilt. And what I've learned over the years, if you like, is shame and guilt will keep us in that repetitive pattern of worry and concern of being found out. And the answer in, in this new way of living with different attitudes and behaviour is to be open, honest and willing in, in all endeavours whether inside or outside of fellowship. So we are transparent in our outlook. It's a personal choice about whether we share we are in recovery from addiction because there is still stigma out there. I prefer to share who I am and what I am on a daily basis. And that way, if people are judging me and don't want to know me, job done. Job done, and I can carry on with people who do want to know me. And that's not a challenge, it's just an acceptance of how life is today. So, love people, hate their behaviour. I've learned that we can love anybody and still wonder if they can change their behaviour. And I learn on a daily basis. And around that shame and guilt, I can say to myself, well, back then, it was then. That was how I was then. And every element of what happened, although some of it was absolutely horrible and quite destructive to me, and probably to the way people felt about me, and I was completely untrustworthy, now is a different case. I do my best and try to be open, honest and willing and stay with a program of helpful inclusion. So at the end of every meeting and uh, as I say at the end of these videos, to God or good conscience or whatever it is that you choose, uh, it's a reflection and meditation about acceptance and it goes like this, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the thing, things I can, I'm tired, and the wisdom to know the difference is always just for today.